automatic transmissions, planetary gear sets. So this is going to be an introduction to the planetary gear sets within a, 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 a the more common automatic transmission. There are there's more than one style of how they create the ratios. There are automatic transmissions that look similar to a manual transmission on the inside. Then there's CVTs. Uh, then there are the planetary gear set manual or automatic transmissions. And we're going to be going over the introduction for the planetary gear set style here. So um, this isn't a textbook, uh, but they don't go really in depth. Um, even as an introduction, this is probably going to go a little bit further than textbook, but this presentation will be available on Teams also. All right, so the first thing, uh, most automatic transmissions are going to be used in these planetary gear sets to create the different gear ratios. So if we have a four-speed transmission, we have uh, one and two, which are normally going to be reduction. Third gear is going to be one to one, and then fourth gear is going to be overdrive. And don't forget about reverse. So a four-speed transmission actually has five ratios that it produces. Reverse will be a reduction, but it will also, you know, reverse the direction of rotation from the input to the output. Now, the power flow through these uh, gear sets is controlled by control devices such as clutches and bands and one ways. These clutches and bands and one ways, which are uh, some manufacturers refer to as elements, they get turned off and on via hydraulics and then the, uh, the hydraulics are controlled by electronics. Or if you go back in the old days, hydraulics are controlled by either uh, uh, spinning motion or uh, rotating shafts or vacuum or uh, a cable position on a valve. But they're all gonna be controlling which clutches or bands are turned on to either hold or drive various planetary gear set components. And the combination of those things being held or driven is going to produce the various ratios, both reduction, one-to-one, -one, overdrive, and a reverse reduction. So the clutches and bands in one ways, they're used to hold or drive various planetary components in combination to create the different ratios. So the simplest gear set of all, which is a uh, a simple gear set and that's the name of it is simple and it consists of the ring gear the sun gear the planetary carrier and the planet pinions and you can see in the illustration that they're, uh, they're they're labeled pretty well but the ring gear is going to be called sometimes an internal gear or an annulus gear and that gear goes all the way around uh, and, and only has teeth on the inside then we have our pinions are actually a planet pinion gear now the planet pinions, they have to be supported by something, so that's what this carrier is for. The carrier is there to, uh, to, to, to basically let them ride. So we have a pin here, we have a pin here, and we've got a pin over here, and that's supporting these three separate pinions. Now if we were to remove the carrier from that, that whole assembly, we could spin those pinions separately. But once they're in there, they're meshed with the ring gear, and then they're meshed with this last component, which is going to be the sun gear. So when an automatic transmission is operating, the clutches and bands and the one-way clutches, they're going to be attached to these components. So you might have, let's say, a forward clutch that's going to be attached to the sun gear. So we're going to have a, a clutch attached here. And we might have a band attached to the ring gear. And then this component, the carrier, will be an output. So this will go to the output shaft. So if we're driving this, holding this, the carrier because the pinions are being forced to move around in a circle because they're meshed with the gears, we're going to have an output of motion through the carrier. <clears throat> so the different types of planetary gear sets, there's, there's a lot of different types, but we come down to really, you know, these five right here are, are the most common. The last one not being super duper common. Um, Actually, you know, because it was used a lot in a specific model from a manufacturer, it is actually out there in the world a lot. So the first one we talked about, which is the simple, and let me flash back up to it real quick and see that we've got one sun gear, one carrier, and one ring gear. And that carrier on it has three pinions. Now, it could have two pinions. It could have three or four or five. It could have any number of pinions that they want to mash in there, as long as they all mesh with the ring gear and the sun gear at the same time. Then we come to the Simpson gear set. And this cutaway drawing, uh, the Simpson gear set, if you see, it's got a ring gear here, and it's got a second ring gear there. 
that has a carrier here and then another carrier. So the Simpson gear set has two ring gears, two carriers, but then it has a common sun gear, which is a double length sun gear that's going to mesh in both the, the, the front carrier and the rear carrier, or in the, in the picture there, the left carrier and the right carrier's pinions. So that, that's another style, and that's the Simpson. Uh, the other one, which is a compound gear set, which I, I don't have up there because we actually have them in our transmissions that we're disassembling. The compound gear set has got two sun gears, uh, two carriers, and two ring gears. Raveno uh, is another style gear set, which is uh, good for, it also works with four-wheel drive, because, I mean not four-wheel drive, four speeds. Because with a simple gear set, you can get three ratios, or sorry, simple gear set, uh, you don't get three. Um, you go down to the Simpson gear set, you can get three gear ratios in reverse. Compound, you can actually get four gear ratios in reverse. And then the Raveno gear set, you can get four gear ratios in reverse also. Now with the Raveno gear set, which is in this drawing here, and it's a little bit convoluted, but we can see we have, uh, um, we have actually two sun gears in this one. So we have what's called the reverse sun gear, which is in this here. And then we have a forward sun gear, which is down a little bit further. Okay. The other thing that we see is that we only have one planetary carrier. But in that planetary carrier, there is a stack or a group of two pinions. We have short pinions and we have long pinions. So the short pinions, these short pinions only mesh with the forward, ring, or forward sun gear. The long pinions mesh with the rear sun gear and the output ring gear. And then, so if we look at the combination, we've got two sun gears on that one, one planetary pinion carrier, and one ring gear. But we do have two different sets of of uh, pinions. And then we have the Le Peltier. So the Le Peltier is a combination between a simple gear set and a Raveno gear set. And the combination of the two, they're uh, they're, they're they're in a sense locked together. Uh, that, that can create a six-speed with reverse transmission, and that was uh, the ZF. Um, uh, the Ford used it with the 6R60, and uh, the uh, I can't remember the ZF model number, but it was it's been used for a number of years uh, in the uh, ZF brand transmissions. Now, something else that can be done is that there can be combinations of gears on these things. So. If we have a simple gear set, which can reliably create two ratios, let's say it can predict, create a, a one to one ratio and an overdrive ratio, and then we attach that to a Simpson gear set. So you can imagine the input shaft to the Simpson gear set could either go one to one at the speed of the engine, or it can be overdriven from the speed of the engine through the simple gear set. So let's imagine we just put another gear set right here on this Simpson set, and we make this the simple gear set. Let me see if I can write simple. And then L, and then E. There's our simple gear set. And it has its own, it has the input shaft coming from the torque converter. It can either produce one to one, or it can produce an overdrive. And what that's going to be able to do is that this one creates, this one has three speeds on it. It has first, second, and third, four gears. Oh, now hold on, that should be a three, my bad. It's got one, two, and three. Well, if we did one to one and first, that would be one reduction ratio. But if the simple gear set shifted to overdrive, then we can have one to one, one to one here and overdrive here. And we go to second gear, this one could shift back to one to one, and then do second, and then overdrive second, and then go to third gear, one to one third, and then overdrive third. So what you're going to do is actually be splitting the ratios of the Simpson gear set with the simple gear set. So you could feasibly make a six-speed transmission with a Simpson and a simple. This has been used um, in you know quite a few transmissions out there. Uh, but rarely were they actually going to be uh, six speeds. They were actually producing four speed and five speeds with this combination. And when Ford's situation, what they did is they took an older transmission, I believe it was the Ford C3, and they basically redesigned the transmission housing to extend it and installed a simple gear set in front of the Simpson. So, 
All right, so gear combinations. Gear ratios are created by driving, which is going to be the input to the system, and holding, which is a reaction uh, of components within the gear set with uh, other components being the output. Clutches, bands, and one ways. They're doing all the work. Uh, unless you have a component that is permanently affixed to, some, to something, uh, like in the, uh, the, the, the 6R60, there's a sun gear that's actually permanently mounted to the front pump, and that sun gear never spins. It's always being held, and that's its, that's its job. But if there you have a component that can either be uh, released or held or, or driven, they're going to be done using uh, clutches, bands, and one ways. And they're going to be turned on and turned off, either hydraulically or mechanically, to, to drive or hold those various components inside the transmission. Now with planetary gear sets, there comes a simple set of rules. Now we're talking about within the gear set itself. So the combination of Simpson and Simple, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, because you actually have two gear sets and they're separated by an input shaft. So if we're considering just one gear set, so it'd be a simple gear set or a Simpson or a compound, or Ravenel or LaPeltier, we consider them within their own systems. They have to follow these four rules. The first one is something has to be an input to the system. Uh, you can't move the car if you're not driving any one component of that planetary gear set. Uh, the next thing is something has to be held in reaction. So in the picture there, we see that the sun gear in the middle is the input. So the sun gear is somehow connected through a clutch to the turbine shaft of the transmission. And what that's going to do is that torque is going to be transferred into it. Now the reaction component or the component being held is the carrier. So in this case, you know, the carrier itself can't spin. Now the pinions can spin. They can rotate on their shafts, but these pins can't orbit around, meaning the, the carrier can't rotate in any direction. And then something has to be the output. And that's the third rule for the first three. Now the fourth rule works by itself because if we were to drive any two components at a speed, and it would be the same speed, we would produce one-to-one, -one, meaning the remaining components would have to be, they'd have to go on at that same speed. So here we are with our simple gear set. If we drove the carrier and the, and the sun gear, then that would mean the, the ring gear would have to go at the same speed as those two. Or if you had a, a Raveno gear set where you have, you know, uh, a single carrier, a ring gear, and two sun gears, if you were just to drive those two sun gears, all that other stuff would have to go at the same speed. So producing, or by following the first, the one through three, you're going to produce either a reduction, an overdrive, or a re reverse reduction. And uh, following the fourth rules is just going to produce one to one. So power flow on fourth is normally pretty easy. All right, so let me go to the, the table here. And we're going to look at the components again, but in, in real time here. So the first thing that I've got is my ring gear. Notice there's teeth on the inside of this ring gear. Those teeth right there are what are going to mesh with the other components. Then we have our sun gear. So this sun gear here sits down in the center of it, and it's the sun, kind of like the planetary. And then we have our pinions, our planetary carrier, which, which holds the pinions. So these pinions, you see them spin on their shaft all at different speeds, and uh, the, the carrier, it holds the pins. So if this carrier is spinning, the pins are spinning, that means that these pinions should also be spinning. Uh, but they'll be rotating at a speed. So if we assemble this component, we're going to put the carrier down inside the ring gear just like this, okay? And then we're gonna put the, uh, the sun gear down inside there. And let's just say I'm holding the ring gear, I'm holding here on the back side. I have a hard time getting that in, there we go. And if I turn the sun gear, we're gonna see what happens to the carrier. You see how quickly the, the how quickly the, the, the sun gear is spinning, but how slowly the carrier is spinning. And what that's gonna produce is reduction, okay? Let's go the other way. Instead of driving the sun gear, how about I drive the carrier? And we can see what's produced is an overdrive. Or what if we did this? Let me see if I can hold the carrier um, and, and I'm going to drive the ring gear. We see that the sun gear is actually going opposite the direction of, of the ring gear. So if this is my input component, this is my held component, and this is my output, I have reverse. 
I think you can see that in the picture. Yeah, so we have reverse there. And we can do it the other way too. If I rotate this thing, it's gonna produce reverse also, okay? All right, back to this. So we have our components there on the table. Now, power flow for reverse, if our input is the sun gear, our held component is the carrier, our output component is the ring gear, that's going to produce reverse. And let's talk about some simple things here. Whenever we're talking about gear rotation, if I have a gear there and I have a gear running, being run by another gear here, let's say this one's going clockwise. There we go. That means its direction of rotation is that, what will the other one be spinning? And that should be counterclockwise. So C, C, W, there we go. And its rotation is going to be reversed, okay? And that's something that's pretty easy to grasp. But we, we, we do have that situation here because we have a sun gear that's going clockwise right here. And then we have pinions, which are actually gonna be going counterclockwise. So if we go from clockwise to counterclockwise and our output component is the ring gear, don't we have a reversal of direction going from the pinions to the ring gear? Well, if we have another gear here and we have it meshed with a gear with teeth on the inside like this, okay, if this one's going clockwise, okay, so it's going in this direction here, it's going to be driving teeth that are on the inside of this gear and it's also going to be going clockwise. So if you're driving, um, if an externally toothed gear is driving an internally toothed gear, you don't have a change in direction. It's kind of like a belt on a pulley. I mean, it is exactly that. Uh, if, you, if you put a belt on an engine and everything's on the inside of the belt, it's going to be turning at the same direction. All right, so that's reverse. So back to the, the, the table here. So we've got um, our input component is the sun gear. Our held component or reaction component is the carrier. And the output component is going to be the ring gear. So just as I did before, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to rotate it um, in, a, in a clockwise direction. And we see that the, the ring gear is going in opposite direction from it because we have clockwise to the pinions, which are uh, now spinning counterclockwise, and they're then gonna be spinning the ring gear counterclockwise. All right, power flow for overdrive. So in this one, we're gonna be now holding the sun gear, and then the next thing we're gonna be doing is, uh, sorry, we're gonna be inputting on the carrier, so driving the carrier, holding the sun gear, and our output component is going to be the ring gear. For this one, I'm going to try and mark the mark the sun gear, and I'm going to mark all the components here to maybe see if we can see some rotation. Let me mark this guy here in a couple spots. And what we should be seeing is that I'm holding this, and I'm inputting on the carrier, so I'm going to be grabbing the pins and rotating it this way. We should see this ring gear moving faster than the carrier. So holding the sun gear, rotating. You see if we line these things up, you can see it pretty quickly. We mark those two, should be able to see those. Holding the, the sun, driving the carrier, and you see how much more quickly these marks advance past the pins. So that's an, uh, an overdrive situation there, okay? Go to the next one for reduction. Now in reduction, we have a different combination. Uh, now remind you, the first one reversed, that was reduction, but we're gonna have reduction with the same direction input to output. So we're gonna be inputting on the ring gear and then holding the sun gear and then the output will be the carrier. So I'm gonna hold this one and I'm gonna grab the, car or grab the ring gear by the bottom. And you can see as I rotate this around, you see how much more slowly those pins rotate relative to the ring gears marks. So that's a reduction, meaning the input is moving faster than the output. Power flow for direct drive is the easiest one to conceptualize because we just follow that fourth rule. And the fourth rule says you drive any two things 
at the same speed, then you produce one to one because whatever's left has to follow at that same speed. So if I were to grab the ring gear and the carrier, you know, there we go, the sun gear is moving at the same speed. Another way to think of this is if I, if I hold on to the carrier and the ring gear, I can't turn the sun gear, okay? I can't turn it, that means they're all locked at the same speed. Zero is the speed, is it not? Or if we drive the two, then that still has to go at the same speed. But that also means that I can drive the sun gear and the carrier, or I can drive the sun gear and the ring gear, or I can drive, you know, any two of these components, or in the other planetary types, we can drive any two of those components and produce one-to-one, -one, which is that fourth rule. So what does all this mean? Well, it means there's a combination, and there's actually a, 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 a chart that's going to show you what's happening inside the transmission. Now what they show in most transmission, this is called a clutch and band application chart. <clears throat> in this clutch and band application chart, it shows you what bands and what clutches are being activated depending on the gear. So you see we have this far left column all the way down is showing the various gears. So we have first gear manual second gear manual, first gear for overdrive, second gear for overdrive, third gear overdrive, and fourth gear overdrive. Then we have reverse. And in each one of these positions, let's say we pull that transmission shifter into overdrive, and we're gonna get first gear if we're not moving, so we're gonna look at this row right here, and in this row we see that the forward clutch is applied, and we see that the planetary one-way is, is applied or in, in holding. So the input to this system is going to be the forward clutch. But what is the forward clutch driving? The forward clutch is driving a planetary component. And in this case, it'd actually be driving what's called the forward sun gear. And we go back here to the planetary one way. Well, the planet one way is holding because it's locked into the case. And whenever the forward clutch is applied, nothing else is applied. The one way is actually applied mechanically holding the planetary carrier. So in this case, we're driving a sun gear and holding the carrier. That's going to produce a reduction. Uh, and we go to second gear, and we see in second gear, what happens in this transmission now is that the forward clutch stays on in second. We then have an intermediate clutch come on, which also holds an intermediate one way, because these two are, they work together. If this one comes on, this one comes on at the same time. Uh, and when you go into second gear, one clutch is applied hydraulically, which then holds another component, which would be, in that case, the reverse sun gear. So we're driving the forward sun gear, holding the reverse sun gear, and that's going to produce second gear in this transmission. And it's the combination between driving a component or holding a component, uh, which is going to create those various gear ratios. So uh, we've come to the end on this one. It was nice and short. Let me back up there. Uh, the next thing that we have coming up is an introduction to clutches and uh, clutches, bands, and one ways. I'll have some stuff on the table for that also. Um, and then after that, we'll be getting into the particular clutches and, and components inside our transmission. So uh, until then, I'll see you later.